The fact of the matter is, if you have penis in vagina sex, there is a risk of pregnancy. And there are ways, of course, that we can avoid pregnancy. This is how not to get pregnant. And you do it by using methods of contraception. But there are many types of contraception and you need to find the one which is right for you. It depends if you've got a penis or a vulva. It depends if you want to get pregnant in future or not. But this video is going to be an overview of all the different contraception methods available. And you can make a decision based on a few things of what is going to work best for your circumstances. So this video is for people with penises and for people with rooms. And the information is useful for everybody. All the information is useful for everybody who's watching this video. Now it's important to mention first up that different types of contraception have different effectiveness. So for example, if a particular type of contraception was 95% effective, that would mean that in a normal year of use that 95% of people would not get pregnant and 5% of people would. So 95 in 100 wouldn't get pregnant and five out of 100 would. But you could combine two, or maybe three methods of contraception to make that effectiveness go up because if you use two methods of contraception which weren't interacting with each other, then you would use uh, the 95% maybe of one and 95% maybe of another one and you get to maybe 99% effectiveness because of that. But we'll come back to that later. So broadly, contraception can be put into four groups. They are a barrier methods, implants, hormonal, and permanent. But additional to that, you could potentially just not have sex. That is a perfectly like valid way of not getting pregnant. But if you wanted to be a bit more scientific about it, there is a possibility that you could just not have sex at certain times. But we'll get to that in a minute. And if all else fails, we do have emergency contraception. And there's a couple of methods for that, but we'll get to those in a minute as well. So let's get into it. Here is an overview of all the methods of contraception that you could use and have in the UK. So first up, let's go with the barrier methods. Barrier methods basically physically stop sperm reaching the ovaries. They are very popular methods of contraception. And if you use them perfectly, can be extraordinarily effective. But as we'll learn, if you don't, typical use is not so great. There are three types of barrier methods, condoms, internal condoms, sometimes called female condoms, and diaphragms or caps. Condoms are a very popular form of contraception and they are more than 98% effective if used perfectly. They protect against STIs, don't use hormones, and they won't affect your periods or mood. They work by stopping sperm entering the uterus and coming into contact with an egg, but they are also useful in oral and anal sex by stopping the spread of STIs. Internal condoms are similar, but are put inside the vagina. They also prevent sperm entering the uterus and they are 95% effective. Only condoms and the internal condom are methods of contraception that also protect against STIs and both can be used in addition to other methods. Diaphragms or caps work by being inserted into the vagina and covering the cervix. They work by stopping sperm from entering the womb. You also need to use a spermicide which contains chemicals that kill sperm. They are between 92 and 96% effective. You only need to use diaphragms and caps when you have sex, but you must leave them in for at least six hours afterwards. So now we're going to look at implant methods. These are methods which are either implanted into the skin or maybe into the vagina of somebody who's got a vagina. And they are intended to uh, kill sperm or stop releasing eggs. All these methods are what we call LARC, which is long acting and reversible contraception. That means they're useful for people who don't want to get pregnant now, but maybe do want to get pregnant in two, three, four years time. Firstly, we have two types of coil that get inserted into the womb via the vagina, the copper coil and the hormonal coil. The copper coil or IUD is a non-hormonal contraceptive that works by releasing copper into the womb, which is toxic to sperm and also stops a fertilized egg implanting in the womb. It has immediate effect and is more than 99% effective for preventing pregnancy. 
It can last 5 to 10 years without needing replacement and can be removed, which returns fertility to normal immediately. The hormonal coil, or IUS, works by releasing the hormone progesterone, which controls fertility. It thickens mucus around the cervix, making it difficult for sperm to enter the womb, and also makes the lining of the womb thinner, so that a fertilised egg can't implant. It can also stop the ovaries releasing an egg, but most people continue to ovulate. It is more than 99% effective for preventing pregnancy, and can last for 8 years, and can be removed to return fertility to normal. The contraceptive implant is a small rod that is placed under the skin in the arm. Similar to the IUS, it releases the hormone progesterone. It thickens mucus around the cervix, making it difficult for sperm to enter the womb, and also makes the lining of the womb thinner so that a fertilised egg can't implant. It also stops ovaries from releasing an egg in most cases. It is more than 99% effective for preventing pregnancy and works for up to three years. For both coils and the implant, you do need a trained medical professional to fit it, so book an appointment with your local contraceptive clinic or your GP. So you note that a couple of those were hormonal contraceptions and the other one stopped sperm in its tracks. Well, hormonal contraception isn't just an implant. It can also be taken orally or by putting stuff on your skin. Now, hormonal contraception is exclusively for people with a womb, and that's because it acts inside the body, preventing eggs being released into the uterus. Because as we all know, we do need an egg to be fertilized, and that's how you get pregnant. So if there is no eggs in the first place, you won't be able to get pregnant. Simple. The five methods covered in this section are the injection, the combined pill, the progesterone-only pill, the contraceptive ring, and the contraceptive patch. All of these methods of contraception use hormones to control fertility, and they contain either progesterone only or a combination of progesterone and oestrogen. Some people cannot take a contraceptive that contains oestrogen, so the progesterone only options may be best if that includes you. Unlike the hormonal coil and implant, you do have to remember to do something for the contraception to remain effective. The injection requires you to get an appointment with your GP or contraceptive clinic to start, and you will either need to go back 8 or 12 weeks later for your next injection, or for some types, if available, you can be given a year's supply to inject yourself at home. The injection contains progesterone. The combined pill and progesterone-only pill can be prescribed by a doctor or nurse after consultation and you will have to remember to take it every day at roughly the same time, depending on the type of pill. You might also be able to get the pill prescribed after consultation with a pharmacist in some cases. You will usually be given a three-month supply to begin with, and then you will have follow-up appointments to review every six to 12 months. The contraceptive ring is a small, flexible ring that is inserted into the vagina. It releases the hormones progesterone and estrogen to prevent pregnancy. The ring is left in place for three weeks and then removed for one week to allow for menstruation. It is a convenient option for those who prefer not to take a daily pill. It does require a prescription and consultation with your GP or contraceptive clinic. The contraceptive patch is a small adhesive patch that is applied to the skin. It releases hormones, progesterone and estrogen into the bloodstream to prevent pregnancy. The patch is typically worn on the lower abdomen, buttocks or upper body and is replaced once a week for three weeks, followed by a patch-free week to allow for menstruation. It is a convenient option for those who prefer not to take a daily pill. Consultation with your GP or contraceptive clinic is necessary to obtain a prescription for the contraceptive patch. All of these methods are more than 99% effective when used with no mistakes. But if you miss taking your pill or delay replacing or repeating the patch, ring or injection, then this effectiveness is reduced. Additionally, these methods might help relieve period pain and other period-related symptoms, and they might even stop periods altogether when using them. None of these methods prevent STIs, so you might still want to consider barrier methods. Having a supportive partner who understands and respects your choice to use hormonal contraception can greatly contribute to a successful and effective method of fertility control. So up to now, all of these methods are temporary in some way. They either wear off or, in the case of barrier methods, you just 
take them off. But what if you wanted something more permanent? What if you or your partner didn't want to get pregnant at all? Well, there is procedure one each for people with penises and people with wombs, where you can prevent that permanently. Although it's not 100% effective, as you'll see. Permanent contraception is a form of fertility control that requires minor surgery. It is important to note that this is considered a permanent decision and should be carefully considered usually in consultation with your GP, and you may wish to consider other options before deciding on permanent contraception. A vasectomy is for people with testicles. It involves cutting or sealing the vas deferens, the tubes that carry sperm from the testicles to the penis. By blocking the pathway of the sperm, a vasectomy effectively prevents pregnancy as sperm cannot reach an egg. You will still have ejaculations as semen doesn't all come from the testicles. Tubal occlusion, sometimes called female sterilization, is for people with fallopian tubes. It involves blocking or sealing the fallopian tubes to prevent eggs from reaching the womb, meaning it cannot be fertilized. Eggs will still be released, but are absorbed by the body naturally. These methods are more than 99% effective. It is possible for tubes to reconnect, meaning you will be fertile again, but this is very rare. It is difficult to reverse either of these methods, and it is rarely available on the NHS. So one other way of avoiding getting pregnant is by not having sex at all. In fact, there's two ways. The first one is abstinence. Now, yes, I and others have said in the past that absence-only education is really damaging, and it is. But that doesn't mean that not having sex isn't a valid method of contraception. It is. In many ways, it's the only guaranteed way of you and your partner not getting pregnant. And for example, if you didn't want to have sex before you got married or something like that, that is perfectly reasonable, it is your choice and you shouldn't be pressured into changing that. However, if you're just trying to avoid getting pregnant rather than avoiding sex, then there is a way that doesn't use any of the previous methods where you could have sex at certain times when the person with the womb isn't fertile. So this is called fertility awareness, and it works by the womb owner measuring their body temperature, by measuring cervical mucus, and by also knowing how long your period is. And there are apps that can track this for you and tell you when it should be safe or, should, or maybe not safe to have sex, without condoms at least. However, they are a bit hit and miss. It is perfectly possible that you have measured all this and you don't think you're, you're uh, fertile, and you have sex and the sperm stays alive for a bit longer than it, you wanted it to and then you are fertile and your egg gets fertilized and therefore you get pregnant. So it's not 100% foolproof. But one thing you could do is combine these methods for better effectiveness. So for example, you could try combining a hormonal and a non-hormonal method of contraception such as condoms and the pill or maybe the contraceptive patch and fertility awareness. Or if you wanted to do a completely non-hormonal method of contraception, you could use fertility awareness and condoms. As long as you're using two compatible methods, basically not two hormonal methods, then you get the advantage of having improved effectiveness because using two methods is much more effective than using one method. And it gives you the peace of mind of being much less likely to get pregnant as well as still being able to have sex. But what if all else fails and you didn't have any contraception available, you know, you weren't taking anything if you were on the pill or something like that, maybe you missed taking the pill, maybe the condom split if you were using a barrier method. Well, we do have emergency contraception. Emergency contraception can be taken up to five days after unprotected sex, but it is more effective the earlier that you use it. It does have to be taken by the womb owner, but there are two methods one more effective than the other. The two methods of emergency contraception are the so-called morning after pill and the IUD. The morning after pill is most effective when taken as soon as possible, ideally within three days, but can be taken up to five days after unprotected sex. It works by delaying or preventing ovulation and is effective only if taken before the release of an egg. It is important to note that the emergency contraception pill should not be used as a regular form of contraception 
due to reliability being different depending on where you are in your menstrual cycle. The IUD or copper coil can also be used as emergency contraception. It is the same coil as the IUD we mentioned earlier. It is a highly effective method when used within five days of unprotected sex, more than 99% effectiveness. The IUD works by preventing fertilization or implantation of a fertilized egg in the lining of the womb. You can get the IUD from a range of services, including sexual health clinics or your GP. Once inserted, the IUD works in the same way as if you were using it as a regular form of contraception. So it can last for up to 10 years, but you can get it removed once you've had a period if you wish. As these methods of contraception followed unprotected sex, you will be at risk of getting an STI. So make sure you get tested. So I hope this video has shown you that it's really important to get the best method for you and your partner. It's based on all sorts of things, including whether you can do hormonal contraception, whether you want the contraception to be temporary, whether you want the, the contraception to be long lasting, but still not permanent, or if you want more permanent method of contraception. This is giving you some options, but you might want to speak to your local sexual health clinic or your GP. But alternatively, you could go onto Brooke's website and they have a contraception tool, which you can use, whether you're a penis owner or a vulva owner, and you can answer a few questions and they'll give you a good list of your options and maybe some alternatives that you would want to use as well. And you can find a link for that in the description. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you did find it useful. If you did, then please do share it with other people who would also find it useful. Also down below, you can pop a like, maybe even a subscribe to this channel if you're interested in sex education subjects. Thanks again for watching and I shall see you in the next video.